Hi everybody, GG works again. I've been uh, coerced, pushed, told um, to do another video, so I've got a few things in the pipeline that I'm working on. Um, I'm working on a bandsaw that I'm hoping to get done. It's an old bandsaw that's been refurbed. I'm hoping to finish that off so that I can actually show you what I've been doing and actually use it in anger. The other thing I've been working on is um, alignment system for cars, trucks, whatever. And I've been working on that for a little while, but I'm, there's another thing that I have to get done. So it's probably about 75% complete. I need to do some welding and some adjusting, some bracketry, and then I can paint it and finish it off. And then I can show you how I actually want to use it. Um, I'll pull the two rig into the garage to actually take a look at it. But in the meantime, what I've decided to do is um, there are a few, few videos out there that have, um, let's show you their workshop, the garage. And this is one of mine. Um, I'll show you my toolbox. This is a snap-on toolbox. I'll slowly move the camera around so you can actually see. It is a snap-on one. It's been with me for probably 30 years. Well, maybe even longer than that, actually. And I've been using this for a long time. It took me a long time to get it. Um, but I finally, but I'm running out of space severely. Um, but now, because Snap-on is so expensive, um, and I don't really do the work every day, and this is just my my home stuff. The stuff I have at work is at work. Um, so this is just the stuff that I use from day to day when I'm at home. So, with no further ado, let's um, crack on. Let's let's see what's in this goodie box. So, first of all, top rack. You can see we've got various sockets. The normal, I would say probably 80% is snap-on um, from the 3 8 drive to the half-inch drive, metric and imperial and then a quarter inch drive adapters, lots of different extensions, ratchets, torque wrenches, um, various odds and, odds and ends. That gets me by with most things, but it's really surprising that uh, even though you have all these tools, there's always something that you don't have or that you need to get, which is very surprising. <laughs> and the cost for these things is not cheap either. So, let us, um, that's our, that's in the top rack. Um, I usually keep the box open most of the time. We just have the normal gloves uh, on the top. The next one is sort of my measurement drawer. Uh, I'll just pull it right out here. Um, in my Mitutoyo, this was given by my parents a long time ago, probably for my 20th birthday. And I still have it today and I use it often. Then my normal vernier, I use the metric one probably the most. If you open that up, I've got an imperial one, another vernier, and the metatoyo, and some very steel rulers I actually have. How's this for being in the toolbox? Can you, can you figure out what that is? I'll show you. Sorry, I have to use both hands for this. It is a slide rule. You don't find that in a toolbox too often. This was my father's long time ago. And it would take me a while to figure out how to actually use this. This was used by just about every engineer before calculators came along. And so it's got a sliding scale that you can check all your, your sizes, your thicknesses, your calculations, your rules. And then it has the normal stuff on the back. Again, not used these days. So I'm just going to take this out of the way for now. Normal cutting, normal stuff that you use from day to day. Some measuring stuff, micrometers. I've got a Mitutoyo, um digital one inch, one inch one there. I've got various brackets, um, angle ones, machined to a good an excellent tolerance that uh, I use 
um, sort, of, sort of inspection mirrors, that sort of stuff. So that's our top drawer. That's usually my, my measurement, measurement drawer. Next drawer is my screwdrivers. A few screwdrivers in there. And if you look at them, there's various ones. Um, and I tend to use most of the orange handle ones, but uh, for heavy duty stuff. And there's the normal Phillips, the flathead, the posi drive, the uh, specialty screwdrivers. You can see like, like that. Um, along with the different Torx, Torx handles, um, snap-on ones obviously, and various other ones. My small snap-on stuff, my hooks, my picks for O-rings and stuff like that. Very important. In fact, this is one of the most important ones, is this snap-on one here. And not only that, there's a compound bend to it. Very important and is very tough so that usually you can hook in very stuff and it doesn't bend there's other ones out there that are cheap that will bend they will break they will snap but i've had that for oh, 25 years and not damaged okay that's my screwdrivers there's probably uh, around 128 screwdrivers in there next drawer is allen keys um normal stuff my things for working on Volkswagens, which is the triple square. They're not Torx, so they're triple square. Then you get the various short ones, stubby ones, and then your normal uh, Imperial Allen keys, metric Allen keys, and all sorts of other goodies here. Punches over there. My specific roll punch. That that has a, a ball end. I don't know if you can actually see that. Good for roll pins, that sort of stuff. So that's my Allen key drawer. Moving on to the next drawer is spanners or wrenches. Um, Imperial over there. Moving down some snap on uh, crow's foot down to offset spanners. Very, very good for uh, getting into tight spots. They're not your normal combination one. Um, some more crow's foot in there. My metric. Um, ones now they do have a serration on there you can probably see here just to give it an extra bite um, you what you have to be careful of is that they can mar you the nut that you're trying to if you're trying to keep it absolutely pristine nut like a brand new nut then they, they will put a little indented but doesn't rack them and then the normal more imperial stuff there again these are the bigger offset spanners, and they go up to that's one and three sixteenths, one and a quarter. I think is the largest ones. Expensive, but fantastic to use. There's a little lever there. Fantastic things just to put your spanner in here, and that gives you an ever a, a bit more leverage to it. Really good. Sometimes you just don't have enough leverage. Okay, on to the next drawer is my pliers. There's some vice grips in the corner and along with all the various specialty pliers, snap ring pliers, circle pliers uh, for boots on some uh, electrical connectors that squeeze squeezes in on both both sides for um, the duckbill ones that sort of pry apart your hose and your from your metal hose to your rubber hose Sometimes they're very tough. This one here is for exhaust, pushing off the exhaust rubber uh, bungs. Sometimes they're hard to get a screwdriver and pry them off. But uh, if you put that on, squeeze them, and out they come. And the normal pliers, nothing too fancy. Uh, most of my stuff is all snap-on. Uh, not because I... Um, I like the quality of snap-ons. Sometimes they're very expensive for what they are. Um, but some things, they do merit that extra cost because the um, if you get a cheap spanner that's... Let's just go back to here. If you get a cheap spanner... Let's just, just pick that one for a second. The wall thickness here is a lot thinner. So you can get into smaller, thin, smaller places along with that 
as soon as your, the quality of the material goes down, then what happens is they've got to beef it up and make those rings thicker. Otherwise, they would break. So when they thicker, then they're harder to get into some spots. Whereas the snap-on is a nice thin wall. There's other ones. There's Williams. There's Proto. There's, uh, I think, some Matco, uh, Heizet. Uh, some of the Japanese Taiwan ones are fantastic. Jet, they're also very good. Um, the other thing, too, that's very, very important. I'll pull out a, a bigger one so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. Let's go to uh, an 18 mil. So, if you get a cheap one, a cheap... Let's see if I have a... must have a cheap wrench kicking around. Uh, somewhere, just bear with me. I'm trying to figure out if I have one that'll... Maybe I can show you an example of what I mean. Um, da, 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 da. Bear with me here. Okay, there's, there's, there's a cheaper one. So, what I'm talking about, you see how the bend is... You get the ring the ring of the ring here and then the material so when you look at it sideways you see how they manufacture this straight then they actually bend it after so the bend is here yeah not there whereas it should be cast so when it's cast it's molded like that so you see how the bend is on there that's not bent that's actually cast so your pivot point is here not here so when you have to tighten a, a wrench you don't have that bending moment of it slipping off that's what the cheaper ones will do the more likely to slip off a nut or a bolt whereas the better ones are cast right into the head of the ring like that which definitely makes it a lot less uh, more uh, makes it more difficult for it to actually slip off and which can save your knuckles and slipping and hurting yourself. So that's the big, one of the other big points that uh, they don't tell you too much about. So that's just, we, we digress a bit. So that's my pliers drawer. There's a few pliers in there, various things. I've lo lots of specialty things in there. Um, snap ring pliers, the normal, normal stuff, and then some extra crimping tools for electrics and that sort of this 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 one here is for uh, doing wires um the normal these ones here are for doing your hose clamps that sort of stuff so that's the top box my next one down is just sort of a goodie box a goodie drawer of various things uh scrapers normal stuff like that some connectors for electrical connectors and then various things for my head torch I've got to always keep good stock of these scrapers and little cleaning tools hi there back again so what were we talking about I'm talking about brushes we just angle this over there's brushes here there's electrical stuff all sorts of junk and Stuff that I uh, use for cleaning, paint brushes, extra bits and bobs, battery stuff for cleaning battery posts, that sort of stuff. Just uh, just to clean them up, that's that sort of stuff. Uh, for testing brake fluid, what you do is you take you got two prongs in there, you put it in your your reservoir of brake fluid, and then press the button and it gives you the percentage of moisture in the brake fluid. So, if it's between here, if there's, obviously it's nothing there, but um, that's a zero, green, and that'll go green, and then if there's a lot of moisture, then that'll go red in here. So it's a very easy, quick way of dipping it in the fluid, and then it tells you right away how much moisture you got, so that you know it's time to replace it. But brake fluid should be replaced every two years anyways. Um, a little thing here that I don't use that often. Uh -oh. That's for measuring your hydroscopic or your um, the amount of fluid that's in the um, battery. So depending where how where the density of it um, of these balls, how they float, will tell you how good it is if it's charged 
if the um, if the fluid is is good. There's other ways of, of testing batteries, anyways. Um, what else can I show you? Over here, we'll just shuffle this a bit closer. Uh, this here for cleaning up cleaning up a grinding wheel. That is a diamond uh, particles on there. So you just put to dress your um, bench grinder driving driving wheel. You just run it across the front as it's spinning, and that makes it a nice s um, flat surface for you to sharpen drill bits and whatever whatever else you want. So that's that. That this here is for just bending fins straight on any radiator. Put that in, run it along, and that straightens up all the the little fins. Just little things like that. Uh, what else can I show you? Nothing else uh, too much. Oh, Clico. I don't know if you've heard of Clico connectors. Um, spelt like that, Clico. Um, these, if you got a panel and you, you want to line up the panel properly, drill the holes in <coughs> and you have a, a tool which is in this drawer somewhere. Uh, I don't know where it is. <laughs> it's somewhere in there. <laughs> Um, and what, what you do is you, it pulls that pin up here, slot it in the hole, and that holds that panel together. Then you put another one in, that locates the two holes, so it keeps your panels as you're drilling your holes in it, keeps it all nice and square, keeps it straight, otherwise your holes might be off of it. So that's your Clico connectors. Um, another thing I can show you here is, um, where is it here? This is a neat little thing here to lubricate um, brake levers, um, that sort of stuff. You have a wire inside a housing, and but you need to lubricate that uh, wire inside. This slips over, so you open that up like so. You slide that over the wire. And this has got a split in here with a hole there. So you slide that in over your housing. Close that up so it's, it grips the, the rubber grips around the the housing it's nice and tight and then you take your spray into that hole and you just spray it and then that goes down the housing into your whatever you're trying to lubricate works for it look works a treat I use that a lot um hose clamps nothing fancy there um checking your spark plugs that sort of stuff your gaps there and the little tab here that you can bend the tab at the end that's a soapstone. I use that if I'm welding. For um, I just cut a piece off, and you can mark um, pieces of metal where you need to cut it. This here is for wire. I showed you earlier the um, wire that you have um, for doing wire lock. So this is where, if you need to drill a hole, you put your nut in here, tighten it down. L let me see if I got an example here. I'll get a nut for a second. This should give you an idea of if you wanted to do any any nut. You put the nut in like this. Cinch it down so that it's oops, sorry. <laughs> put it down there like so. Tighten it down like that. So now you drill there and it goes through the housing or through through the material and out the other side. So now it's two different sizes. And the same thing you can do that with a bolt too. Screw the bolt in here, through there, and you drill the hole right through the bolt. And now you can wire lock a nut and a bolt so it doesn't come off. Neat little things. Okay, that's it for that drawer. So next drawer is my sort of machining drawer. Um, this, I'll just move this back just a wee bit so you can see. Extra drill bits. Um, this is a neat little thing. So if I wanted to cut something here um, and I want to see what the profile is, all I do is I put that on there. Put that on there. There's my profile. So I know my cut is li like that for the drawers. So that's that's what that is. Just a neat thing. The normal taps over here. Um, normal for for wood. 
that sort of stuff, send a drills step, uh, thread files, that sort of stuff, pitch gauges, all of this metric and imperial for testing out what pitch so you measure your bolt and then you can check your, your pitch and the, the number on there will tell you the actual pitch size of the threads. Very good. Uh, feeler gauges, normal feeler gauges, lots of drill bits, centered drill bits, that sort of stuff. Nothing too fancy on this drawer. Moving down to the next drawer is files. So, looking at our normal files, going from small ones to big ones. Um, these are nice little tools here. What you can do is, I've got to make sure that you can actually see it. This you can put into a housing and you can hit it with a hammer on this side to pull out a seal, pull out a bearing, that sort of stuff. So that that's a nice neat tool. Um, I should have a smaller one here too, somewhere. Um, the normal um, pivot, pivot bars, again these are snap-on, really tough. Again, you use that for going into something and levering it back or lining something up. Various sizes of that. Punches and all that sort of stuff. Ah, there's the small one. So that gives you an indication of what what it is. You just hit on that side and it pulls out the whatever you're trying to pull out on that side. Um, this is really meant for wood. These ones. Uh, various sizes. And I think it does tell you the size on here. 1 16th, 1 8th. Uh, what size we got here? 3 16th, quarter inch. And if you have a piece of wood, I'll get a piece of wood. And then I'll just show you. So if you had a piece of wood, something like that, and you wanted just as a sharp edge, and you just wanted to take that edge off, you just run it up that, that edge like that. And that just shaves a little bit of edge off of there. Really good. Easy, quick, and it does a nice and uniform cut. Really good. Normal file card for cleaning up files. Um, I do have some uh, things again for wood. Uh, some more chisels. I don't use it that often, but now again, it is good. Let's see, what are those? These are the bigger bigger spanners, uh, the big tools, the shifters or adjustables on this side, going from small one, from a six inch, which is just a wee thing, to a 10, to a um, 15 inch, to an 18 inch, and then the normal spanners on that side, the big stuff, up to two inch or 44 mil or something like that. Uh, this drawer again all sorts of hammers on uh, the right hand side all sorts of hammers going from small stuff. Now when I say small I do mean small. <laughs> so you go from that to club hammer that sort of stuff into as the soft ones um, into this style and into the bigger ones. So I've got a few soft ones. There's another one there with the dual density ends, that sort of stuff. Um, some specialty tools on this side. Let's just shuffle over. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, excuse me while I just move the tripod down a little bit. It just makes it much easier for you to see what's going on here. There. That's a bit better, isn't it? Okay, what we got in here? We've got a normal reamers for reaming out pipe. I've got my infrared um, little thermometer in there. I've got my torch. I don't use this that often. It's not very good, actually. It's, very, it's not very accurate using this, but I do have one. Um, I do have some chisels, some pneumatic chisels in there. You can plug in your various blades and then you, you can use it 
just take off gaskets, that sort of stuff. Very, very good, but uh, I don't use it that often. Um, Benzomatic, this is good for soldering or for heating something up. Just take this off here. Now you got a soldering iron that uses just so you fire up your flame, heats up the tip. Now you can do all your soldering without any wires attached. Not, not good in explosion environments, but uh, for where I am, it works perfect. Again, these are all pipe pipe tools. There'll be reamer for reaming out uh, pipe, uh, internal and external, with uh, hardened blades. Very important on there. In my pipe bending days, which I don't use anymore, there's a, a pipe cutter. Now this one's slightly different because it, it's a ratchet. But what you can do is you can slip the pipe over it. Then as you turn the pipe, you can just cut the pipe like that and you can rotate. And it rotates right around whenever you tighten it up against. Works a treat. Works really, really well and easy to get off the, the pipes. I have the normal stubby ones like that. The real stubby ones. Normal one and then this one here, which I use the most, very good. These are um, swage lock, fantastic tools. Had that for probably, I don't know, over 30 years, and I've replaced the blade once in the end. I see there's no blade in the end there, but um, I've used that a lot. These are good cutters. If you get spot welds that need to be cut, you put that in there, cuts the Machines it nicely out of the way, very, very easy. Works a treat. I've replaced a few times. Again, being snap on, you think it's a lot of money to buy all this stuff, which it is, but if you have to replace it, it's just free of charge. You just phone them up, say this is, or you get a hold of them, and you tell them that uh, something's broken, and they just replace it. That's the good warranty. There's no quibbles, there's no um, how did you break it, when did you break it, and all of that stuff that some manufacturers might do. Because they, a lot of manufacturers, they give for warranty anyways, but they know people aren't going to come back, they'll just buy another one. But because of the cost of Snap-on, you're more likely to go back to them and actually ask for another one, because you've either broken it. Again, more goodie box is my true um, drill drill indexes, one imperial, one metric, lock wire for that thing I showed you earlier, um, normal sanding disks, that sort of stuff. Uh, these tools here, fantastic for uh, levering and car um, interiors to lift up plastic pieces. These are all made out of hard plastic and it works very well. And um, what else can I show you? If you got <coughs> disc brakes with a full, say, four part, six part calipers, not the sliding type, you could use these. And it's just a ratchet. Oops, wrong way. And what do you, a, as you ratchet that, like so, you can see these two plates expand like that and it pushes the pistons back in again. And when you're done with it, slip it out slide your pads in and uh, that's it, it's done. Then, then you can make your brake job much faster and easier. Um, I use these here for studs on, um, on your wheels. When you take your wheel off, then uh, you have a, usually on the hub, you'll have a lot of rust around where the studs are. So this one it goes over the stud you just use a little battery drill and you just clean up your your works very well and you can change these I think yeah there you go just a little velcro that holds it on slots it into a groove and you get various ones like that larger ones smaller ones and that works very well like makes it so much easier to clean things up down the road um th this is sort of my goodie box I want to change some of this stuff 
because it's taking up room that I can easily put this somewhere else. I'm, I'm hoping to put it some somewhere else. So that's that's the plan for that. It's just fittings, gauges, all sorts of stuff that I use for airlines and various bits and bobs. No, nothing, nothing too untoward in there. But I think I have to change that because I'm, I'm running out of room, so I need more room. B bottom box again, more goodies in there, just junk. But uh, I've got all my pipe benders that I had for a long time. I'll show you. I don't know if you can see it. They're made by Swage Lock. They are fairly expensive. Oops. But it works. Works an absolute treat. Um, they do work very well, and lots of all sorts of other goodies in their box. Again, this is a drawer that could probably cleaned out and used for actually putting in my tools. So that's that's my box. That's the one I've had for a long time. I made a little bracket on the side. I'll just show you this here. As you can see here, um, I've just I'll take these off here so it's easier to see. I made up a bracket. Uh, stuff clamps to hold um, my uh, air regulator. It's got a water separator at the back. I don't know if you can see that there. And then a T piece comes off after the regulator, and then to lubricator, and then out. So if you don't want to use the lubricator, you plug it in here. If you want to use the the, the lubricator, plug it in here, and then now you can actually adjust the regulator up there so whatever you plug in there airline or whatever you can actually uh, use that so that's my toolbox I'll show you more the garage is a bit of a mess right now so um, I'm sure there will be more along the way uh, one more thing just before we go one thing I did get from my cousin which was fantastic and I really look forward to using it all the time now is my compressor being a if it's a, in a, a lot of moisture the um, the compressor will suck up a lot of moisture from the air and you don't want to start putting that in your tools even though you got a little separator it's not big enough so he had one of these air dryers and they are fantastic works a treat my air is dry it's warm and I know that this is my tank. So there's my compressor and air dryer above there. So goes from the compressor up there through the dryer. Dryer cools it. The water condenses from the air, separates it, just pushes it, pushes the air out with a little solenoid valve. Then it dries the air and then warms it up again and then puts it back into that tank that I can use fantastic works treat and it's much easier on your all your tools so um, watch out for a few more videos coming up I'm hoping to do that in the next few weeks and uh, thank you for taking the time to see what I've got here cheers for now